Hello students, today we will discuss about the implantation. My dear students, whenever you are talking about the changes uh, going in the first week of uh, fertilization, you have the cleavage and after the cleavage there is a formation of the blastocyst. Now, when we are talking about the blastocyst, this is the stage which is also covered by zona pellucida. So, when the implantation will take place, the first prerequisite is that there has to be the removal of zona pellucida. So, as soon as the zona pellucida disappears, the process of implantation starts. So, let us uh, discuss what is the definition of implantation. So, my dear students, in the implantation, what is happening that this is your uterine cavity and in the uterine cavity, this is the wall of uterus which is known as endometrium. Now, in this endometrium, this blastocyst is going to implant. Now, there is a two process will take place. One is known as addition of this blastocyst with the endometrial wall and later on it will penetrate the whole thickness of this endometrium till the functional layer. As you should know that the endometrium is having the two part functional layer and the basal layer. Now, when we are talking about this implantation, the implantation will take place in the functional layer that is it is two layers stratum, compactum and spongiosum. So, the in implantation when you are defining the implantation, it is defined as a penetration this word has to be there penetration of the decidua. Now, what is decidua? Decidua means your two layers stratum compactum and stratum uh, spongiosum of endometrium. So, implantation is penetration of the decidua or the uh, functional layer of endometrium by blastocyst and later on this blastocyst completely invade, completely invade the thickness of the decidua. That means, at the end of the implantation, you are not able to see the developing zygote or the embryo into the cavity. The uterine cavity is completely empty. What does it mean? That initially, if you will see this is your cavity and inside the cavity you are able to see there is a blastocyst, but this blastocyst will disappear inside the wall of the endometrium and at one end you will find there is no uh, developing blastocyst or the embryo. So, this is what is about the definition that definition will have the two word one is the penetration and second is the penetration is followed by the complete invasion of the endometrial wall by a blastocyst. Clear? Now, the second thing comes is what is the duration? So, my dear students, the implantation will start after the disappearance of the zona pellucida and the implantation is done by the blastocyst stage. So, we know that the morula will form on the third day and on the fourth day the blastocyst will form. And once the blastocyst will enter into the uterine cavity, it is still surrounded by the zona pellucida. So, the disappearance will start from the sixth day. So, the implantation will start from the sixth day. That means, the implantation is a feature of the first week, of, but it will not complete in the first week. It will complete into the second week on the twelfth day or the thirteenth day of fertilization. That means, if you will open the book, you will find that fertilization is a feature of both first week as well as second week, because the process starts at the end of first week, but it complete on the twelfth day or thirteenth day after fertilization in the second week. Now, what is the site of implantation? Now, when you will see the pelvis. Now, this is your anteriorly placed pubic symphysis. This is your sacrum. 
Now in the female pelvis, here you will have the urinary bladder, posteriorly you will have the rectum and in between you will have this uterine cavity, this is your cervical canal. Now here you can see that this, this uterine cavity is having the anterior wall and it is having the posterior wall. So when we are talking about the implantation site, the most of the time the blastocyst implant on the posterior wall in more than 50% cases. In remaining cases, the implantation occurs on the anterior wall, but it should be in the upper part of the body of uterus. So what is the site of implantation? The site of implantation occurs in the upper part of the body of uterus on posterior wall. It can occur in the anterior wall, but it should not be in the lower part. So the upper part of the body of uterus is a normal site of implantation which can be on the posterior wall in more than 50% cases and or it can be in the anterior wall in remaining cases. Clear? So what are the type of implantation in human? Answer is interstitial. Now what do you mean by interstitial type? Interstitial means that this is your cavity of uterus and when there is a formation of the blastocyst, this blastocyst ultimately disappear from the cavity and it completely invade inside the wall. So interstitial means when the blastocyst completely enter into the wall of the endometrium, this is known as interstitial type, clear? Then what is the process of implantation? So my dear students, there are two process. Now one process is necessary for the endometrium that is known as decidual reaction. So this decidual reaction is a process which is taking place into the endometrium. The remaining part is a process of your blastocyst and this process of blastocyst is responsible for the implantation. So let's discuss about the first process, decidual reaction. So let's discuss the decidual reaction first. Now what will happen in the decidual reaction? Decidual reaction take place into the endometrium. Second thing is that in the decidual reaction, this is your decidua. You will know that there are three layers in the uterus. Inner side is known as endometrium. Then this is the second layer is known as myometrium and the outermost is perimetrium. Now this endometrium is further having the three layer. This is your spongiosum, then you will have the compactum and this is the basal layer. Now these stratum, spongiosum and compactum are known as functional layer of endometrium. Now in this functional layer, what is happening, the cells of the stroma or you can say the cells of the endometrium enlarges. Now this enlargement occurs because of the increase in the glycogen material, increase in the lipid material, increase in the fluid material. So the cells will enlarge into the size and there is a one very important thing is that when the implantation is taking place, your endometrial is already under the secretory phase. So in the secretory phase, when the implantation is taking place in the endometrium, the cells are changing themselves. And that change is known as decidual reaction. And what is the uh, changes are taking place? That the cells will swollen up, they increase in the size, they are getting more and more glycogen, more and more lipid, more and more fluid. Why? So that they can provide nutrition to the coming blastocyst or the developing embryo. Clear? So this is the one change which is taking place here into the endometrium during the process of implantation. Now these changes are taking place into the blastocyst. So what is the first change? Now I told you that this is the zona pellucida and inside the zona pellucida, this is your 
blastocyst which is lined by the trophoblastic cell and inside one end you will have embryoblast and this cavity is there which is known as blastoceal. Clear? Now this zona pellucida avoid the abnormal implantation. So first what will happen there is a disappearance of the zona pellucida which is known as hatching. So what is the first step in the implantation at the blastocyst? Answer is hatching of the blastocyst. That means disappearance of zona pellucida layer. So now this is the disappearance of your zona pellucida. Now the second layer is adhesion of blastocyst to the endometrium. Now this part will take place from which end of the blastocyst? This is the question of your exam that which part of the blastocyst first show the adhesion to the endometrium or maternal uh, epithelium? Answer is polar trophoblast or you can say the embryonic pole. So this embryonic pole or the polar and side of the trophoblast first will go and attach with the uterine epithelium or endometrium. So what will happen here that you know that this is your maternal side. So this is suppose this is your endometrium. So this polar trophoblast first go and just show the adhesion and this adhesion will stimulate further changes. Now this adhesion is known as partial or superficial implantation which is taking place on the seventh day. Now when you will move into the second week of the development, this partial implantation completes into the deep implantation. So this addition is important. Now as soon as the addition will take place, there is a splitting of the trophoblast into the two layer. Now what will happen here in the next stage? So in the next stage you will find that the polar trophoblast shows the splitting. So now what will happen in the next stage? Now this is your trophoblast on the polar side and now there is a formation of one more layer which is known as syncytial layer, syncytiotrophoblast. Now these syncytiotrophoblast cells releases the proteolytic enzymes and these proteolytic enzymes start to replace more and more endometrial cells so that this blastocyst invade. What it invade? It invade the decidua. So these syncytial layers is responsible for the penetration of the blastocyst through the uterine endometrium which is known as deep implantation. So what is happening? First, disappearance of zona pellucida. Then the polar trophoblast shows the adhesion with the maternal endometrium. Now this is known as partial implantation on the seventh day. Now because of this, there is a splitting occurs in the polar trophoblast first and there is a formation of syncytial trophoblast. These syncytiotrophoblasts have the capability of deep penetration. So they will release the enzymes and these enzymes will displace the endometrial wall cells or the decidual cells so that slowly this blastocyst will go deep and deep into the maternal endometrium. Clear? So what will happen that ultimately you will find that this will disappear from the uterine cavity and there is a formation of a small puncture here into the endometrial wall and through this puncture your blastocyst will enter and it appears inside the decidua and it is covered by the syncytial layer. Now this gap or the puncture into the endometrium through which the blastocyst enters inside the wall of the endometrium later on filled by a coagulum and this coagulum is formed by 
the fibrin material. So this is known as fibrin coagulum and later on this coagulum is further replaced or healed by uterine epithelium. Clear? So what are the steps in the implantation? First hatching, second addition of the blastocyst to the endometrium, third addition is followed by the deep implantation that is the penetration of the blastocyst. Now there is a differentiation occurs along with this penetration at the polar trophoblast and that is why the syncytial layer is responsible for the penetration. And lastly there is a defect of the endometrium is healed. So there is a one more uh, change occurs in this syncytium that there is a formation of the primary villi with the lacunies and these lacunies are later on filled with the maternal blood that we will discuss in the coming part of the our discussion of embryology classes. So my dear students, what is the applied aspect? So you can write down abnormal implantation in two ways. One, the implantation occurs abnormally inside the uterine cavity and one, the abnormal implantation occurs outside the cavity. Now in the uterine cavity, if abnormal implantation occurs in the lower part, then it can lead to a condition is known as placenta previa. If implantation occurs outside the uterine cavity, it can go in the ovary, it can go into the fallopian tube, it can go into the mesentery in the abdomen or sometimes it can go, go into the pouches that is pouch of Douglas. So these all Im implantations are known as ectopic pregnancy, clear? Ectopic pregnancy in which the most common type is fallopian tube pregnancies. So how to write in the exam the steps of the implantation? First hatching of blastocyst that means disappearance of the zona pellucida. Second you have to write down the addition of the polar end or the trophoblast with the uterine endometrium which is defined as a superficial or the partial implantation followed by the penetration and erosion of the decidua by the syncytial trophoblastic layer which is known as deep implantation and then what is happening there is a formation of the lacunar spaces into the syncytial layer and those will those will fill with the maternal blood and simultaneously the uh, penetrating area or the defect which has been created by the uh, invading blastocyst is closed with the help of fibrin plug which later on healed or covered by the endometrial lining, clear? You can draw this diagram also in the exam which is showing that how this endometrial wall first is having a defect and through this defect this blastocyst is going deep and deep. Now these are the polar trophoblasts which has already been differentiated into a multinucleated layer is the syncytial trophoblast and these syncytial trophoblasts are responsible for the deep invasion of this developing embryo, clear? So now at the end of this session of the implantation, you are, a, you are having an idea what are the steps of implantation, how to write in exam and what uh, is the important things to write down in each and every point. So this is all for the session. Thank you.